All right, just experimenting with the concept, trying to uh, see what I can get out of it here. So what I decided to do is I got a full bridge rectifier here to give DC out. So I've decided to try the inverter to give me a potential DC here. And I've got it some experiment with some of the PEG cells here. This is one of my very first one which happens to work pretty well. So um, I'm trying with this one. So it's in series as a DC cell, one DC out plus minus going to another plus minus here. And I've got the neon here as the load. And sure enough, when I turn the inverter on, it does its thing over 100 volts, but closes the loop, no continuity. I tested it again, same thing. There has to be zero, no resistance, no beep, no nothing. And um, what's really interesting is it also charge this capacitor here, which is like 47 UF, when like 100 milliseconds, and I was dumping it manually through this transformer here, and it was like flashing neon on the other side, like a big purple flash. So it's doing the cap dump very, very well. So I'm gonna try and integrate my switch in that to um, dump the cap. But first I wanna show you exactly what happens. I turn the inverter on, and this, this means a lot. Look at this neon, folks pure potential over 100 volts at this point and nothing bad is going on no heat no nothing like that no weird sounds and the electrodes here are very far apart they're like two inches apart and that works really well so now if you understand this can charge capacitors and the capacitors can dump and we can get current generation from that so no closed loop folks and I think that's the point um, you could uh, basically I think it's better this way because it's it's safer to operate than all that high voltage stuff right and it seems like just pulsing this this capacitor that's charging to or to this will do a good job. You get real, real current spikes out of the deal. And this is real. I mean, for what it is, this is real, you know. So this means a lot. And here it is on the inverter. And I'm going to do something next that some people are not going to like. But for demonstration, look what happens when we take this. Plug it to the actual mains. Another way of operating the mains in an open loop mode. Just gonna plug this in. And sure enough, there you go. You've got yourself the same effect going on, and this is right off the mains, rectifying. So you got your uh, roughly 110 DC out here, and then your um, one volt in series but this is killing the loop back into the rectifier so now we're operating the mains as an open loop and this puts out a lot more um, displacement current than the one wire system directly off the mains where some people tried it and you know with an extra ground wire as a counterpoise they can blink an LED this actually runs so I, I, I think it's pretty well self-explanatory if you've been following me what all this means and how it really simplifies, I mean really, really, really simplifies the whole process here of keeping the dipole, the dipole open, running it as an open loop. Now we just dump this that charges a capacitor, a medium-sized capacitor. So, um... What this means is um, it's still worthwhile trying to experiment with the PEG cells to try and see what gives them a little bit more current because that essentially becomes the base displacement power that it has to play with those potentials. So naturally, even if you're not going to operate, you know, devices directly, it's still wise for us to experiment to try and find, you know, even if we can get a milliamp or so more out of the cells, it's that much more 
which means that even if you have let's say 100 volts well you'll be able to displace that a lot quicker so what I'm getting at is a lot faster cat dumps at that voltage even if we can enhance the peg cells a little bit without introducing any conductivity of course so that relays the challenge and of course keeping your electrodes far away enough so that you don't have any kind of weird couplings and that, things like that so this is crude um, someone could say well maybe you're this is AC but I'm using the rectifier to get back DC so even though there is still technically a pulse uh, you could always put a capacitor there and filter it out it doesn't matter I'm just doing it quickly but I'm just getting that it's not because it's AC and there's uh, some sort of uh, very loose AC couplings and that's how it's creating the loop because someone is going to obviously argue that you can refer to my earlier videos where I do it with pure DC and we're just simulating it like very uh, typical AC power supplies here we're working off the rectified output so here we are and this works perfectly so I'm just giving you all examples but of course for um, ethical and uh, safety reasons it's always best to run it off your own power source but I'm just showing you for transparency what this means and you could really scale this up and actually get real watts out of your own inverter or AC whatever and again it's best to do it with DC I'm just this is just a quick way to bring it up to medium voltages without keeping the system too complicated um, someone would probably want to even maybe use a Jilti for something and uh, rectify that on a full bridge rectifier but all of those including the inverter will take a few milliamps just idling right so it might not be suitable depending on what the application is right so you got to mix and match well do you have a bit of power available to make it work versus do you have nothing at all I've offered um, ideas and systems based on this where you don't need any just a few dead batteries and the peg cell will do it and you don't need an external switch or trigger but if you want to go more complicated there's nothing stopping you from doing that if you know what you're doing but obviously the more you put into a system the more complex it becomes and the more interactions and things that can go wrong so at the same time it's trying to keep everything as simple so it's easy to work with and diagnose if something flunky starts to happen you don't have a million coils and capacitors to check for resonance and what's the phase and all that stuff right so that's what my goal is trying to keep this all all very simple you know a cap dump on this with an SCR will do it into a traditional transformer rectify that and you've got yourself a charger a real battery charger so again the ideas are, are just pouring in at this point and I hope it's going to inspire all of you as well and always looking forward to your comments. Hey folks here's the Bedini running on pure potential. What I've done is I've modified the peg cell concept made one specifically for this no continuity same idea just about half a volt this one puts out so I tried it with the AC inverter at the 110 directly into an inverter and I've got the, not the inverter, the rectifier so that's a DC full bridge output in series with one of the peg cells isolating it that charges the big capacitor here and it runs the Bedini motor just fine and right now I'm not doing anything with the uh, inductive kickbacks it's running the uh, lights on there flashing it so there it is and I'm just using the inverter for 100 volts potential that the meter read no problem it went up to like 101 volt <laughs> so this is interesting very interesting I'm just going to zoom out a little bit here. This was a, um, this, this is not even connected, high voltage generator. So right now is the battery, the inverter with the 
white extension which is just plugging into the full bridge rectifier here so one series DC into another one but this cell is completely um, isolating it so um, charges the capacitor capacitor runs the Bedini and it's really working it's spinning running its own lights and everything Let's see if I could tune it a bit. But that's interesting, folks. What happens is, you know, whatever um, essentially you can get from the electrostatic, it will raise that potential level for you. So at higher voltages, you get you get more output. And if I wanted to, I've got it set to the pretty lights, but I could charge a real battery with this if I wanted to. If I set it to output, I'll probably run fast because it's not good to run them without. But yeah, it'll run super fast without. Um, But yeah, the PEG cell has no problem maintaining it and isolating the loop. And I just wanted to show you this because I find it's very important. So I will keep you all posted with all this.